Hello folks, uh, this is Carls, your friendly neighborhood violin teacher. Um, I wanted to let you know first that I have uh, heard a lot about the, um, the sound on the recordings not being picked up very well. Um, we are working on a solution to that. We just didn't have one for this set of videos, but the next set of videos, we should have something a little more uh, predictable, like maybe a lav mic or something. So we are working on it. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to pretend like all of you are very far away and I'm just going to talk a lot more loudly. Hopefully that will help, um, but I promise you we are working on it. Um, so today what we're going to do is uh, three things. We're going to do a little bit of bow hold review because unfortunately you can never do too much. You can never do enough bow hold practice, so we're going to do as much as we can. Um, and then we're going to learn a little bit about putting the violin on our shoulder. That's called belly up. And then the last thing, the number three thing, is a little, is a little bit of review with um, finger numbers. So let's start with a bow hold. And what I wanted to remind you, of course, is that this video is mirrored. So when you are doing this video, you should hold your bow in the same hand that I'm holding mine. You should hold your, your bow in the same hand that I'm holding mine as though you were in a mirror. So in this case, I'm holding my bow in um, my left hand. So you should be holding your bow in your left hand as well. So if you're not sure what your left hand is, ask your mom and dad. Most of the time, most of us write with our right hands. So if you are, if you usually write with your right hand, then your bow should be in your writing hand. If you are left-handed, if you are left-handed, your bow should be in your not writing hand. So let's get, go through that one more time really quickly. If you are right-handed, that is to say, yeah, if you are right-handed and that's the hand you write with, then your bow goes in your right hand. If you are left-handed, then your bow goes in your not writing hand. In either case, your bow should be in your right hand. So again, mirrored. Right now my bow is in my left hand. That's why it looks strange. But anyway, it should be mirrored across. So let's review. Let's do, we're gonna do 10 of these bow holds if you remember from last time here. So um, if I can get, maybe try a little bit closer this time here. So remember we take our thumb, we stick it there, we take our middle finger and we stick it here, and then we put our index and ring fingers above and we curl our pinky, just like this. So let's do 10 of them sort of on the quick side. Here we go. That's one. Shake, 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 shake. It's two. Shake, 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 shake. Remember, soft, separate, and curved. That's three. Shake, 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 shake. This is four. Again, soft, separate, and curved. Soft means my hand isn't crushing the bow. Separate means there's a little bit of daylight between each of my fingers. And uh, curved means none of my fingers are straight. They're all curved. Soft, separate, and curved. I think that was number four. Uh, let's do, <coughs> excuse me, uh, let's do number five. So here we go. Remember that your thumb is bent. Half on the horsehair, half on the ferrule. Middle finger here. That's five. Hey, we're halfway there. You can do it. Here we go. If I'm going a little bit fast for you, that's totally okay. Do as many as you can. Or you can also pause the video and get caught up as well. That's totally fine. Um, follow along. Here we go. This is going to be number six. Bend our thumb, put our middle finger across from our thumb. Good, number six. Shake, 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 shake. We shake our hands so, we, so our hand has a chance to forget what we just did. If our hand forgets what we just did, then that's better because it means that our brain has to do the work of reminding it, which is the whole point. The point is to get it in your brain first and then in your fingers later. So this is going to be, this is going to be number seven, just like this. Here we go. All right, number eight, bend your thumb. Your middle finger is gonna go right across from your thumb. Index finger here, curved. And then index finger and ring finger and then pinky on top of the stick. Soft, separate, and curved. I think that was number eight. Shake, shake, shake. Here we go, number nine. Half on the horsehair, half on the ferrule. Middle finger, index finger, and, and pinky. Nine, here's our last one. I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, that was, number, that was number 10, all right. The next thing we're going to do is called belly up. 
That's a strange word. It's a strange phrase. What it means is, is, uh, is actually how you go from holding your violin in rest position to actually putting it on your shoulder. So when, I'm gonna show you first what it looks like when you're all done with it. So the finished belly up will look basically just like this, where you put your instrument right on your shoulder, just like that. But we're not gonna start with that. Just, we're gonna make it, we're gonna take more steps to make it a little bit more understandable. And then down the road, we'll do it the way we just did. So um, the first thing is you should be standing in rest position and you shouldn't have a bow. We're gonna, we're gonna put our bow, in fact, my bow is just sitting here safely on a little table I have. We don't need our bows at this point. Instead, what we're going to do is we have our, we're gonna be standing in rest position with our feet together. You can't see my feet, but they're right next to each other. And my violin is nice and snug. It's underneath my right hand. Again, the same hand that we practiced all of those bowl holds with is gonna be the same arm that's gonna cradle our violin in rest position. So right now, we have our feet together and we have our violin right here. So the very first thing for, so the whole practice of putting your viola, of your viola, sorry, the whole practice of putting your violin up on your shoulder is called belly up. I'm gonna show you the whole thing once without talking so you can see it. And then I'm gonna walk you through the, the steps and we're gonna do it together. So um, here we go. So belly up starts with your feet, which you can't see. And, and from now on, just watch me and I won't talk for the time being. So that's it, that's it. Then to go back to rest position, I just have to let go, I just raise this arm, take the violin nice and snug and put it underneath my arm and bring it down just like that. So uh, we're gonna try this again and I'm, this time I'm gonna walk you through it. So again, starting from rest position with your feet together and your violin nice and snug underneath your arm, you're gonna take your knot violin, you're not, <laughs> actually it's gonna take, you're gonna take your other hand, the hand that's free right now, that hand, and you make kind of like a duck beak. And you're gonna take that hand and you're gonna go on the bottom shoulder of your violin. A lot of kids like to go to this one here on the top because it's easier to see. I don't blame you, I get it, it's easy to see, but that's the wrong one to go to. So if you can see it really easily, it's the wrong one. You should go down here instead. So make your duck beak, oh, guess what? I did the same mistake I always do. <laughs> I've only been teaching this for 15 years. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the first thing before you do anything else with belly up should be your play position feet. So remember, rest position feet. When we have rest position feet, your feet are right next to each other. In play position feet, you move them apart slightly so you're standing a little bit more balanced and comfy. So that's number one. All the stuck beak stuff, this is number two. So we go here underneath your arm, so underneath, the sh underneath the neck of the violin. That's probably a good thing to do. If you go underneath, you're probably doing it correctly. So you make a duck beak there. Then that's gonna hold the violin very snug while you take your, your hand that used to snuggle the violin and hold the other side. So now you can see I have thumbs on both, on, at the end of both sides. My thumbs are on the back of the violin. And the violin is right in front of me now. The next thing is to lift it above my head. So this doesn't need to be over your head. Don't do this just in front of you a little bit. So your face is too low, the top of your head is too high, just like here, just like here. Then you're gonna look at your left elbow. You're gonna look this way. So you're looking at that elbow. And you're gonna keep your eyes on that elbow. This is gonna get super weird, but you're gonna keep your eyes on the elbow while you take the button of the violin and put it to your nose. Then you're gonna snuggle so the button's gonna point at your throat and the violin's gonna sit on your shoulder, just like this. And then this hand, which used to hold the violin, is now free. So this means you're done. And my feet are still in play position mode. So now, we're gonna go back to rest position and we're gonna do it all over again. So I put my feet together, I lift up this arm, and I put my violin underneath it, and then I'm snuggled here. So, and I'm back to rest position, that's really cool. So in other words, it's super smooth to go from rest position up into play position and then back again. So we're gonna try that, uh, we're gonna do it again. So we should be in rest position, feet together, and play position, get the little duck beak. I'm in the wrong spot, 
I'm on the correct spot now. Nice and snug. Then, let me see here. So now I have the violin upside down. Now it's above my head. I'm going to look at this elbow right there. And I'm going to keep my eyes there while I take the button to my nose. And notice here that the, the button is literally, you probably can, hopefully you can see, get really, really close here. You can see that the button is literally touching my nose. That's totally fine. Then, right here, <coughs> right there, <laughs> the middle of your throat is where the button's going to be pointing when you snuggle the violin on your shoulder. And then, once you're snuggled, you can just relax this hand and you're sort of done. Now, we put our feet together, lift up the arm, and put this back. Just like that. So we'll do this if we'll do this three more times. Play position feet, duck beak, goes there. Release the violin and hold it with both thumbs here. A good, good reminder, remember your thumbs, I'm sure you guys need that far, but anyway, both of your thumbs should be on the back of the violin. Then above your head, look at your elbow, button to your nose. And then snuggle here on your shoulder, let go of this hand, and you're done. Let's do it two more times. So we put our feet together for rest position feet. We take the violin and we snuggle it underneath our arm. And now we're back in rest position. All right, here we go, two more times. So play position feet, duck beak, right there. Violin goes upside down. The violin's gonna go over your head. Look at the crook of your elbow. Take the button to your nose and then snuggle it down here, just like this. And then release this hand and we still are in rest uh, excuse me, play position feet. All right, we're gonna do this again. Feet together, violin underneath. All right, last time, I think we can do it here. So, play position feet, duck beak. Violin is upside down. Violin goes up here. Look at your elbow. Take the button to your nose and snuggle it here just like this, and then turn this off here. All right, that was, I think it was five times. That should be about it. So again, feet together, take this, put it underneath. Ha, <sighs> okay, and we're done with that for today. So that was called belly up. The last thing we're gonna do today is just a quick review of our finger numbers. So remember, this is mirrored. So you should be using your left hand. You should be using your not writing hand. I'm using my right hand. I know it's backwards, but that's okay. You should be using your left hand, your not writing hand. Now, if you're left-handed, <laughs> if you're left-handed, you should be using your writing hand. Boy, that's really kind of backwards here. Um, so if you're not sure whether you're right-handed or left-handed, if you're not sure if you're left-handed or right-handed, ask your mom or dad and they will tell you, or your parent or guardian or your aunt or uncle, someone. And if they don't know how to tell, it's simple. Just the hand you write with. So for this hand, what I'm waving at you now here, this is, so I'm waving at you, I don't wanna confuse you. Anyway, you should be using your left hand. You should be using your left hand. So, a quick review of finger numbers. And with finger taps, we make a circle with that hand. I probably can get a lot closer here. We make a circle with that, finger and tap the thumb. So this is finger number one. Tap, 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 tap. Maybe 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After one, of course, is two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After two is three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After three is four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we'll do it backwards with fourth finger. Probably a little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Third finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excuse me, second finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, excuse me again, nine, ten. And finally, first finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So um, that's actually it for today. Let's do a quick, quick review. So we started off with making, with reviewing and making ten. Do we do ten or five? I think we did ten bow holds. Ten bow holds. The next thing was belly up. 
That's how to take the violin from rest position and put it on your shoulder and then go back. And then the last thing was finger taps with our left hand. This is our violin hand. The reason why we're doing this hand with finger taps is because this is the hand that you're actually going to be using to play stuff on the violin. All right. So I think we're all set. Practice hard. We'll see you next time.